feel that the urgent question is, for many people, when you have an extended lifespan, can you do this without having extended consciousness? And it's so clear to me mm -hmm. that without extended consciousness, the extended lifespan is a depressive thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think statistics show that many people in our culture will die within two years of retirement, often because they have no goals, they have no sense of right. what to do with that phase of their life. And so if one could model for them, this is where we come back to the spiritual elder, if one could model for people, this is what you do. These are the tools that you can use for your harvest in life. And this is how you can bring to fruition who you are and who you have become through a life. Mm -hmm. I often have the sense that many of us have to come back into life again because we have incompletes, mm -hmm. you know, like a student who has done all the work during the semester but hasn't written the exam, so hasn't mm -hmm. harvested, as yes. it were, the, the grades, the marks of the work that they had done. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is then a not very... Um, delightful incarnation if I don't bring my harvest along with me. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess one of the fundamental questions that comes up for me when you talk about harvesting a life is, is the basic philosophical question, what is the purpose of life? Uh, and, and there are so many answers that can be given. Yeah. I think uh, what's so wonderful about life is that we are in each other's, for instance, theater. Mm -hmm. Now I am a character in your theater, and you're a character in my theater. <laughs> and it turns out that all the people that we are connected with, mm -hmm. we are doing with a minimum amount of personnel a maximum amount of stories. So each story can then be said that it has its own purpose, its own unfolding. Mm. But I think on the larger scale, mm -hmm. Uh, we all feel so strongly that our mother, the earth, is waking up. And when you begin to see earth as whole, like Hoyle said, when people will see the planet from outer space, uh, an idea will have been born in their consciousness that will be pivotal mm -hmm. in consciousness. Yeah. And this has really been, so, been true. So the moment you begin to see yourself not only as an individual, but as a cell of the global brain, then the purpose of life is so large, so much larger. So one of the purposes is for us to appreciate what there is. Mm -hmm. As if to say that when Mother Earth is looking in the mirror, she looks through our eyes to see herself. Mm -hmm. And our appreciation is the gift that we can give back to say that we enjoy it. So harvesting a lifetime mm -hmm. is something that we can bring back and say, for life and for the gift mm -hmm. of this life, whatever I learn, I will now upload into the global brain. Mm -hmm. I will save it to the hard drive, as it were, of the planet. Mm -hmm. And that's why I ask people sometimes the question, are you saved? And I mean... It, in the same way as a person who's working on a computer, <laughs> that having done about an, an hour's work and not mm -hmm. saved even once, yeah. and then there's an electrical failure. Mm -hmm. Oy, how terrible it mm -hmm. is at that point. All this work hasn't mm -hmm. been saved. You seem to be saying that each human being comes to this earth and we each accumulate in the course of our lifetime at least one insight which is unique to us. And essential. And, essential. And, es and essential. And that our, our purpose, if we're to further the evolution of life on this planet, is, is to harvest that insight and somehow to pass it on. And now the question is where? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that, you know, how did I get into this whole business of spiritual eldering? When a person is practicing in any form of self-awareness and introspection, then you watch how your life is shaping and changing, and you begin to see things happening as one grows older. Yeah. And in a youth, what you would call in a youth culture, the diminishment that comes with the eyes don't see so well and the body isn't as, as it was in, in younger years, mm -hmm. then you would say, oh, I'm, 
I'm getting down the hill. Yeah. Yeah. So many people, it seems, fall into <coughs> that trap. They view their old age as, as just becoming more and more diminished mm -hmm. from what they once were. Because they don't see what is possible, what mm -hmm. the next possibility is. When Gene Houston speak about, speaks about a possible human, yes. we are now on the verge of a new expansion of brain. This is what's so exciting about it. I used to live in Manitoba. There, uh, we never had apple trees except crab apples because the crab apples couldn't, uh, th were the only kinds of apples that could ripen in the short summer. In that that weather, we had. yes. Uh -huh. And in a shorter lifespan that we had before, we could grow perhaps the uh, reptilian brain, the limbic brain, and mm -hmm. the cortex. Mm -hmm. But then there remains about 80%, some people say, some people say more. In the silent of areas of the of brain. The brain that the haven't so been involved yet, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. My sense is that they ripen at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we were to utilize the right kind of psycho-spiritual technology, that's to say, what do you do inside of yourself, with yourself, in order to format, to open up, areas of the brain that you had no access to before. Yeah. Most of them, they're there. It's not that they aren't in existence. They come to us serendipitously. People would say, I have a hunch. Mm -hmm. I have an intuition. Mm -hmm. But they come like peak experiences that we have no control over. Yeah. And not always social support to nurture those experiences when they do come. Right, right. And so what happens is, that I said it to myself, is it not possible to then create a domestication of peak experience? Mm -hmm. Just as the, the hunter-gatherers, yes, domesticated agriculture and animal husbandry mm -hmm. to the point that now they don't have to go hunting because the herd is available here mm -hmm. and they don't have to go gathering because they have it in the field and the orchard. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's possible to tap this new area of the brain that is ripening in older folks mm -hmm. and is also ripening in younger people because that's the same way as in the individual is happening at the time when one becomes an elder. So it's happening for the planet too. Mm -hmm. when I, have you ever seen how kids do the Rubik's Cube? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever been able to do it? No. <laughs> I remember my eight-year-old son was much better at it than I was. Right? Yeah. Uh, what happens is mm -hmm. that I feel that they can handle complexity so much better than we mm -hmm. could because our training was not to get to there. Right. Furthermore, I believe that what people call the morphogenetic field, that mm -hmm. part in which uh, the habits of mind are entrained, mm -hmm. uh, that they hadn't yet been entrained to such a level of complexity. Mm -hmm.